So I'm measuring and scribing my elevational line for where the rim beam, the 6x12s, are going to sit on top of our posts here. I don't have the video of cutting those. I couldn't find it, so we'll move right along. <laughs> um, here you'll see Rowan and I working the come-alongs and hoisting the 6x12 beams into position. Uh, you might also notice the 2x4 and 2x6 cribbing situation that we set up, which is a temporary rigging job so that we can get our straps at a higher elevation than the final elevation or the final resting elevation for these beams. Um, it is possible that two guys could have shouldered these two beams or the four beams as you'll see and get them into place but I gotta tell you they were just about 24 feet in length and some change and they're 6 by 12 and they are green and they were very heavy which leaves no room for error and one slip could be a broken wrist, a broken neck, a crushed shoulder or worse and so given that this is mostly just me doing the build I didn't want to risk myself nor uh, anybody in the family so we took uh, proper precautions and we went with the uh, next best idea which I thought was uh, setting up this little rigging operation some of you might say well why don't you have a telehandler why don't you have a crane so on and so forth and well that's a good question and honestly this was fairly easy to do it was fun to engineer and um, the crane was booked up uh, for almost a year so we passed on that idea and then by the time I would be able to to rent or get a telehandler way up the canyon I just decided on these uh, come along. Now, some others of you out there might say, well, why are you using come-alongs in a vertical fashion? They're not rated for that. And uh, to that point, I'd say, yeah, you're right. They aren't rated for vertical lifting. However, they are rated for over 2,500 pounds per strap. So I'm not really worried about it. And considering the overall weight of these beams doesn't even come close to 2,500 pounds and we've got at least two straps on each one and we're only lifting roughly four to five feet. Uh, I'm not really worried. Now once we get into setting the rafters things do get a little dicier there and you'll see that in the next video. So at any rate this is the system we went with and I'm glad we did. It saved a ton of money. It actually did save us some time when you consider all of the logistics that are required to get a crane all the way up the canyon here or even a telehandler. Those are big machines. Um, so like I said it was fun to engineer and I'm glad we went this route. The sped up video footage here doesn't quite do the process justice in that you could actually see how much time all of this moving around actually takes. And it's also lacking the visceral or uh, uh, palpable sense of urgency and also danger when you're lifting these things. Um, not to mention just small injuries can take place and we were lucky that nothing that like that happened. Um, no one got their thumb or hand pinched in between a post or a beam. No one got any knuckles crushed and it went pretty well in that regard. But um, you know sometimes when these videos are moving quickly uh, you kind of miss out on some of the hard realities of the job.
So you'll see me plumbing up this post here. It was pretty plumb already as it's already set in concrete. However, the sun keeps twisting and bending all of this green lumber just a little uh, seemingly every day. And what you'll notice is I'll be running around in these videos, checking this, checking that. And what I'm trying to do is um, establish my tolerance um, for for framing this whole thing uh, because I have to equate in that all of this stuff is going to shrink and move a little bit. Here I'm putting the first of two big uh, beams that are going to run lengthwise uh, through the center of the cabin. And this is to support the overall diaphragm and then also give upper support to the post that we'll be putting, or loading I should say, onto these beams that will be uh, eventually supporting the ridge beam. Hopefully this video is a testament to those of you who think that more people on a job means more productivity. If you know what you need to get done and you are capable or have the resourcefulness enough and the creativity enough to use straps and braces and jigs you can work by yourself on just about anything you could imagine especially when it comes to things like building cabins or most any size of residential structure now it may take you a little bit longer but you can get it done and very often you can get it done faster than if you're trying to manage two or three people and um, yeah, so hopefully this video is, like I said, a testament to doing it yourself. On to the hardware. So these are some simple pieces of angle iron and you can see I've cut them at roughly 12 inches long and these are going to be my corner uh, my corner brackets that are going to hold my beams together on the inside um, at this point I've got everything nailed off um, and, and both with gun nails and hand nailed but the engineering calls for 3 16 steel uh, 90 degree brackets such as these to hold my beam connections together um, at those co inside corners uh, for the rim beam system if you will and so that's what I did here I took some 3 16 angle iron cut it down the size I bored these holes and then uh, as you can see here Katie and I are um, shooting them with black paint so these are a little custom 
connectors, and it was, again, inexpensive and easy way to go. Now you can see we have sprayed all of these brackets and screw heads with one coat. Once I install everything, I'll have to recoat, possibly. Okay, and then here you'll see the installation of a couple of these inside brackets and how those work. You can see there at my left hand is placed on the the beam that runs the length of the cabin. And then to my right shoulder, you'll see the beam that runs the width of the cabin. Now this is important to understand because the length of the cabin, that beam that runs that full span will bear the load of all of the rafters, whereas the beam running the width will not bear the same amount of load because there will be no rafters sitting on it. So it won't bear the same amount of weight. That's important to understand. And now you'll know why the brackets are being bored and set the way they are. So the long running beam, the one that I'm drilling right now, has to be uh, lagged and then the beam that will be connected to it uh, I will have to drill all the way through and run through bolts through the bracket and putting washers and nuts on the back side effectively that end beam that runs the width of the cabin if you will will be hangered or hanging or connected to the inside of the beam running lengthwise. Now without getting too deep into the engineering of all this, it's basically so that we don't compromise the load bearing beam and we give positive full contact and positive support with the post, as you can see here, directly bearing the full thickness of that beam running lengthwise. Something I forgot to mention was that the holes that you saw me drilling on the left side there, those were pilot holes for the lag bolts so that it didn't crack the wood when they entered. If you haven't done this type of timber framing um, or framing with big dimensional timber, then a couple of things you might want to think about are making sure that when you pilot a hole or you drill through that you're holding your drill um, as absolutely as straight as you possibly can because by the time you've drilled through the other side you might find that your hole is out of place by a half inch or quarter inch and your drill bit has traveled up or down or left or right and this can be pretty frustrating especially when you've got to make sure that you're uh, lining up uh, your brackets just so or in some cases where you're using knife plates some of you might know what those are you've got to be really accurate with your your cutting and your drilling in order to get this stuff right um, you can assume some amount of slop and still get a good positive connection, but it can be very frustrating to learn the hard way for the first time. <laughs> and um, what I usually suggest is to always up the size of the hole uh, comparatively to the size of your nuts and bolts. That way you are getting through there and you've got a little bit of play. Um, and it, it just makes your life a lot easier. I never liked that old saying, work smarter and not harder. It just doesn't work for me. I don't think it actually works for anyone. 
The idea that you're not going to work harder is, to me, absurd. And anyone who's actually out working all the time is always working smarter and improving their skills and becoming more efficient. And at the end of the day, it takes both working smarter and harder to do a good job. And that's just basic problem solving. Anyway, this is a perfect case where you saw me literally pinching the post with my legs as I pull it up vertically. I am working harder. Um, I would also argue that for the sake of time and limited resources, I'm working smarter. What you'll see here is the first members of the floor, excuse me, the roof system. Uh, being installed these are the three posts that will hold up the ridge beam it may not look like much from this perspective of the camera but these posts are heavy and the ladder's a little rickety. You can see I'm standing on the top like I shouldn't. And then in a moment, I will be balancing on a six inch wide beam. Um, <laughs> and you're about to see me balance my way across the beam, literally. Pick up the post here and slowly walk it into a vertical position. Don't try this at home, folks. <laughs> <laughs> 